Hello. Hi there. How are you? Uh, my name is Monita Hara. Most people call me Dr. Hara. I'm the uh, superintendent here at the Scranton State School for the Deaf. Since 1916, we've been a line item in the governor's budget. We have operated as a state school for the deaf um, here in Scranton, in this location, on these grounds for 129 years. Uh, we were turned over to the Pennsylvania Department of Education in 1916 through a legislative act, and at that point we became a line item on the governor's budget. What we would like to see happen is that we would, of course, be put in again as a line item on the governor's budget and operate on the same amount of funds uh, that we've operated on this year, which were significantly reduced uh, this year already, but we have told the legislators that we could function on our uh, allotted amount that we received this 2008-2009 school year. I was asked uh, if we have a development director, and many private business schools uh, do have development directors, and of course development directors are for the purpose of uh, creating capital campaigns and, and uh, donations and things like that. Uh, being a state school, um, we have to go by job descriptions that Pennsylvania Department of Ed approves, and they do not approve uh, a development director position. Mm -hmm. So my stance is that uh, we do have development directors in that all of our teachers uh, develop and direct uh, our students because they are highly qualified in working with deaf and hard of hearing children, and, and they indeed are the development directors. What would be the worst case scenario if the school did close? Well, I think the worst case scenario would, of course, be that, uh, you know, we lose all of our funding and our school gets turned over to a private business, which is a private school. Uh, this, would, this would have a huge impact on the taxpayers because the school districts fund special needs children to go to special schools and we have done our own cost analysis and what we charge the school districts or what the school districts pays to us is twelve thousand dollars per student if this school were turned over to a private business school that number would probably triple or quadruple depending on what that private school decides they need to have, you know, to serve these children. We are a bargain for the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, a lot of times in the newspaper they'll report that, uh, you know, it costs $80,000 per student for an education here, and that's not correct. Because what people do is they have taken our uh, $6.3 million uh, line item allotment and divided it by the number of students. And that is not correct. First of all, we didn't get $7.3 million this year. We got $6.5 million. And second of all, you cannot um, do that kind of cost analysis because it doesn't consider the fact that uh, staff are paid out of those funds, that we operate uh, 24 hours a day, five days a week, and uh, we hire three shifts of employees. So that figure and that number is very erroneous. Uh, our cost per student usually runs somewhere cl close to um, around $60,000 for us, but the charge back to the school districts is around $12,000. And anyone in the school districts understands what a bargain that is because not only do we provide children with an education in the classroom, we provide every single related service that they may need, which is a plethora of related services. Exactly. Um, also, we brought up uh, on the program last night how we have students here from far and wide, of course. Um, they travel even from across the seas. Um, we were wondering, with the way that the school is being stopped right now from taking new, um, new applicants, mm -hmm. how does that affect your budget, your payroll, your, able, your capacity as a school to grow by telling people that they cannot register at this time because of the halt? Yes, we have been told by the, or I have been told by the special education director in, at the Pennsylvania Department of Education that we should be not accepting any new enrollments. And we continue every day to get inquiries about uh, students enrolling here. So what is happening is actually uh, parents are not being given options uh, as they should be legally by us not being able to discuss with them what options they are choosing. And also, um, 
it stifles our growth, of course, and it, and it decreases our numbers. So in its own way, it is making us um, implode um, by not taking in new students. You constantly have to take in new students because you have students who are graduating. And you want to be a source for parents to come to. And that's devastating, not taking any new enrollments. I think that's what they were commenting on yesterday in the program about the, I, for lack of a better word, um, conspiracy theory with the shutting down of the school because you actually are stunning growth and you're also creating you to sabotage this entire environment which will make everybody feel unstable, especially the students and the parents that are funding this for their children. Yeah, and, and not only the parents and the students, but also the school districts. Exactly. You know, we get calls every day uh, asking us from the school district special education directors, what on earth is going on? What can I tell these parents? And, and quite honestly, I can't tell them anything. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's very disturbing. Uh, it is very um, unethical in a lot of ways how this is being handled. And... Um, some people have said it's a hostile takeover. Right, that's a hostile So it, it depends on your perspective. Uh, parents are, are extremely disturbed because they have seen their children bloom and grow here. And they want to continue to see them progress and do as well as they can. Exactly. The question I have is, what will the future of these students um, what, what is your ideal future for these students if, they, if the school were to stay open? Um, will, this imp, will this make you excel? You know, with all negative things come positive things. Uh, the good that has come out of this is that we have been given an opportunity to advocate further for deaf and hard of hearing people, to explain more in detail how you educate deaf and hard of hearing children, and also to, to put them in the limelight uh, that they are exceptional um, young people and that um, they need a specialized education in order for them to succeed. And with the specialized education, they indeed do succeed. We'd like to ask you, what is your educational philosophy on teaching these students as opposed to hearing children and deaf children, the differences? Yeah. Educational philosophy uh, is very important to, to any institution of education. Uh, what makes this school unique in Pennsylvania and even across the nation is that we have highly qualified instructors who teach bilingually, mm -hmm. meaning that they teach in American Sign Language and they also teach English. Now we're speaking of children who, who don't hear or don't hear well. And so it's very important to us as in, within our educational philosophy of teaching that you separate those two languages so that students clearly understand the difference between American Sign Language and English. Many programs tend to combine into what is called a total communication philosophy where you are talking and signing at the same time. We believe that that philosophy is, is not a good philosophy and that it confuses the students uh, in, in their learning and in their understanding of language at all. Uh, we also teach spoken English for those students who have uh, good enough English skills. Uh, we work, uh, we have a campus program um, off campus that's at Scranton uh, School District at Prescott Elementary. We call it the Auditory Access Program for those families who it's a preschool program where their children are, uh, co have cochlear implants or hearing aids, and they choose to only use spoken English. Another thing that I would like to emphasize is that our students are not just here in these walls all day long. Uh, our students are exposed to many, many other um, programs and schools. Our high school students attend a career technology center where they study um, graphic arts, computer science, culinary, auto body, auto mechanics, anything that a career technology center would offer. Many of our high school students are very adept in those careers and, and last year we had a student who graduated with a, uh, had studied welding and he graduated from high school with a certificate uh, to be a professional welder. That's, wonderful. That's quite an accomplishment. That's 